MCCLA. Welcome to the live broadcast of Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. We are welcomed into worship this morning with the words of the call to worship with loud voices of praise and with soft-spoken wisdom. Sing to God new songs of wonder, with planets spinning in the galaxies. Sing to God new songs of joy, with fireworks in summer's night's sky. Sing to God new songs of grace, with crowds at excited worship services and with children whispering their dreams to God. Sing to God new songs of hope. And so we sing a new song with renewed vigor this morning. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Let's rise in body and spirit. And this is our song. And on this Sunday morning as we gather for worship, we commit one with the other to praise our Savior all the day long through all the worship experiences of this congregation this day, through the activities of its ministries and programs, through its outreach and spiritual education programs that continue to enrich us and bless us. We thank you, almighty and loving, gracious one, that we gather together on this Sunday 
to join our voices and our hearts and our minds together, to weave them together as your people, to share in this community of faith. So bless us as we gather this morning, and in that blessing, make us a blessing to those around us, to those in our world, as we become the hands and the feet, the heart and the mouth, the very life essence of Jesus recreated in this world today through our very embodiment of you. May your Spirit anoint us, therefore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you this morning. Please be seated. It really is, as always, a joy to welcome you to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning as we gather one with the other to share in fellowship and with friendship with one another, uh, to find new spiritual connection and to remind ourselves that God is not finished speaking to any one of us. God is present. God bless you this morning. We want to welcome you, especially if you are worshiping with us for the very first time this morning. Uh, we know that you have a choice in worshiping communities and we cannot be more excited that you you've chosen to be with us this morning. I wonder if you would indulge my spirit if indeed you're with us for the very first time today. I wonder if you would just raise your hand and keep it up just for a brief moment so that we can see you, uh, so that we can welcome you to worship. Uh, we are just glad that you are here. Let's welcome one another then in God's holy name. Uh, we will notice that the ushers in just a few moments will be uh, passing out the welcome tablets, so please do take a moment to uh, allow those uh, tablets to move down the rows. Uh, please do sign in for us this morning. Let us know that you've been present. Uh, let us know how we may be able to minister effectively one with the other. Um, and as your church staff, let us know how we may be able to minister to you personally and effectively. We are so grateful uh, that we have that opportunity with you. We also want to uh, welcome and extend a big welcome to those of us who are joining us live on the internet this morning. Uh, we broadcast our services live every Sunday morning, um, and we are delighted that uh, you have chosen to be in worship with us as well. I would also remind you that there is a place on the website that you can check in for us as well today. Uh, let us know that you've been present, and also let us know um, how we may be able to be in prayer with you, wherever you are around the world. Just a few weeks ago, uh, at our 11 o'clock service, uh, just to show you the effectiveness of our internet ministry, uh, a few weeks ago we had two women um, who were worshiping with us at the 11 o'clock service, and after service uh, they came up to me in the uh, just at the stairs and were shaking hands, and they said to me, "said If you ever see two people worshiping with you from Amsterdam, uh, that's us." Um, and we happened to be in Los Angeles uh, this weekend and we extended our visit so that we could actually come to the church uh, that we consider our church home. Um, and they were just delighted to be here. And then this past week, I uh, received another email from a, young, a younger man uh, living in Ventura County. Um, he also uh, is part of our online community. And uh, he sent us a video that he wanted to uh, have shared with us so that we could remind ourselves of the effectiveness of our online community that is present with us every Sunday. So just take a moment to uh, look at the screens and let Steve thank us this morning. Hey, MCC family. I'm one of the ones worshiping with you online as part of your extended online community. I've been searching for a church that accepts me for who I am. I know for myself and for those that watch these broadcasts can feel the love and belongingness from MCC. I encourage you, if this ministry blesses you as much as it does for me, spread the word so it can be a blessing to others as well. It's only a mouse click away. God bless you all. Isn't that wonderful that we get greetings from our online community as well? As you came in this morning, you should have received your orders of worship, and on the front you will find the order of service for today, and of course inside you will find much, much more information that is of interest, I hope, to you. Um, all of the connections in which we can be connected as a congregation also helps you to know how to make your visit more meaningful this morning and to allow you to know where things are in the campus. So please do avail yourself of all of the information that's in your bulletin this morning. As we say every Sunday, we're a busy congregation and not everything that we get to do is announced from the pulpit, so it really is important that you take a few moments and to take this home with you and mark on your own calendars the things that you would like to be involved in. Uh, there are some announcements for you this morning, so if you would just bear with me, I'll let you know those announcements that are of immediate need and concern for us this morning. 
Uh, first of all, uh, this weekend we're celebrating 21 years of uh, our Spanish-speaking ministry within our congregation. Uh, last evening we had a great concert here to celebrate with our Spanish-speaking church. Um, and also today, of course, at 1.30 there will be a special celebration service. So if you happen to be around at 1.30 and wish to come back for our 1.30 service, uh, please do come and share. Uh, we may not always understand everything in another language, but the Spirit continues to communicate to us uh, wherever we are, we are a church that believes in speaking in different kinds of tongues and allowing that spirit to interpret for us. Uh, all of the flowers that you see around the church this morning are in memory and in thanksgiving for our uh, Spanish-speaking ministry, and uh, we are delighted uh, that they are a part of us and we are a part of them. We are one church, but experiencing that community in very different and diverse ways. So we thank Reverend Alex uh, Escoto uh, for his ministry and for his participation patient and as you may know um, Reverend Alex just graduated from Claremont Theological Seminary uh, with his Master of Arts and we are so proud of him uh, and his work. Uh, this whole month we have our Pride, uh, Pride to Thrive Drive. Um, it's our opportunity to reach out to young members of our community, uh, especially those who are perhaps a little more disadvantaged than we are. Uh, many of our young folks uh, who are at the Jeff Griffith Center as part of the Lesbian and Gay Center um, are in there moving from um, uh, sort of kind of shelters but into the world. And so we are helping with donations uh, of used clothing or new clothing that can be used by young folks as they go to interviews, uh, perhaps wanting to be a, a mentor um, or to help someone get their GED. So if you would like to volunteer in any way during the Pride Month and beyond, uh, please see Reverend Dr. Pat Langlois or Tori Topian this morning um, and we'll make sure that you get connected uh, with our Pride to Thrive Drive. This is Pride Tide, uh, and this whole month we'll be celebrating Pride as a member of, as a part of our congregation. Um, but next Sunday is the Pride Festival uh, here in Los Angeles, and we want to remind you that we will not be having worship next Sunday. Uh, before we get to that, of course, uh, many of you have been uh, signing up for the work days and for helping with the booth um, over the Pride weekend. Uh, we are delighted that our T-shirts have arrived, um, the Colors of Compassion, uh, this year is the theme that we have, and I'm going to open that up so that you can see it. It's in both uh, English and in Spanish, um, and these t-shirts are available today. They're $20 or, or as much as you can afford. Um, and then on the back, uh, this is the exciting part. Uh, this is the uh, QR code that we're encouraging folks to come up and to uh, scan us, um, and this will take them directly to our church's website. Uh, and so uh, we're inviting people to scan us this weekend uh, and know more about God's love for all of God's people. So please do take these away. And of course, they're usable after Pride. You can wear these uh, to fashion events and to uh, all these other things that you go to. So these will be available uh, directly after after worship. A few important things about Pride though, so if you would just bear with me while I get these announcements out to you. Um, if you need a ride um, on the train, uh, we have a train that's going to be a part of our Pride procession this year. Uh, please see Reverend Dr. Pat Langlois this morning, um, or you can leave a message with her um, on the table project. Uh, we also need people to help uh, with the parade, uh, especially with getting our uh, float from here to uh, a, a home in West Hollywood. Um, if you are able to drive a U-Haul or you would like to volunteer some time for that, uh, please again see Reverend Pat this morning. Um, and then just so you know, next Sunday, um, we will be meeting uh, not only for worship at the corner of uh, Santa Monica and La Cienega at 10.15, but our pride con par parade contingent uh, will be meeting north of Crescent Heights. Uh, we don't know our number yet, um, but we have paid enough to the, uh, to the staff to make sure that we're in the first half of the Pride Parade Festival. So um, uh, please do show up uh, and march with us next Sunday. So as far as worship is concerned, uh, we'll be worshiping here next Saturday. Uh, it will be an old church worship service at five o'clock in the evening. Uh, it will be in English, Spanish, Tagalog, and in British, um, and uh, ASL for the hearing impaired. Um, but that will be next Saturday at five o'clock. 
And then, of course, on Sunday morning, uh, we have our interfaith worship service with our Jewish, our Buddhist, our Christian, uh, and our Muslim friends. Uh, and we'll be gathering at the corner of La Cienega and Santa Monica, uh, and that will be at 10.15 at the morning. And then we'll go from there directly to our contingent for the Pride Parade. Um, so uh, next Sunday, the church will be open. Uh, there will not be worship, but there will be opportunities for you just to come and have quiet, silent prayer. So please do know that we are still having our building open for you uh, next Sunday. Lots and lots of things going on and I don't expect you to remember everything so please do go to the church's website um, or our Facebook page um, or indeed leave a message for us on the table project uh, if you have any questions about any of the things that are happening um, in this coming week. So now we gather for worship and I want to invite you to gather with a sense of purpose and with a sense of spirit. Let's turn to one another and offer a sign of peace and welcome as we gather this morning. Good morning. Please remain standing as you are able for the reading of the scripture. Today's reading comes from Genesis 3, verses 7 through 11. Immediately Adam and Eve did see what's really going on, saw themselves naked. They sewed fig leaves together as makeshift clothes for themselves. When they heard the sound of God strolling in the garden in the evening breeze, they hid in the trees in the garden, hid from God. God called to Adam, where are you? He said, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid. God said, who told you you were naked? Did you eat from that tree I told you not to eat from? Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. great it is to see Reverend Steve Peters back with us after an extended illness. We are so glad that you are home with us this morning. Welcome home, Reverend Steve. Let's gather for prayer as we ask God to reveal to us something new in our spiritual journeys this morning. Let us pray. Almighty and loving and holy one, you who we know by many names and yet many more yet to come, you who we acknowledge as God, the author and perfecter of who we are, of our faith, and of our journey. You who are with us this morning as we gather in this holy place, and it's made holy not because we have somehow prayed over it, but because we have consented in our own holiness to be present. So be with us this morning, O oh God, as we create this holy space, as we create a space for us to be able to come as community. And in that holiness, may we be aware not only of your message to those of old, 
but your message to us today that we might live those relevant, vibrant, inclusive, and progressive values that Jesus demonstrates for us. And in the living of our faith, may the world find too a relationship with you that is one of authenticity. And so, loving and gracious one, as we have sung and prepared our hearts, now open them so that we may hear you and respond to you. And now I pray, O oh God, that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, the risen Christ, in whom we pray, amen. Well, I, I'm hoping uh, that this sermon series has been hitting some uh, resonating with each and every one of you, and I'm assuming that it is because you keep coming back. Um, either that or you're just indulging me over these last few weeks and allowing me just to do what I need to do. Uh, but this uh, sermon series has been a really interesting one. I think I told you right at the very beginning that uh, uh, this was a, a challenging sermon series for me, The Gospel According to Avenue Q, um, and it had some challenges challenges for me because not only do I love the music of Avenue Q, uh, but usually when I do sermon series, I usually base them straight out of scripture. Um, and this was rather different to do a, a sermon series based on a musical and to use some of the music from that uh, particular musical and to connect those with the spiritual values that we hold as a church and as a community. And we've been listening over the last uh, five weeks now. We've got one more sermon to go in this series, but we've been listening over the last five weeks uh, to some of the music from Avenue Q as a part of our, our services. And, uh, you know, it's not always easy, especially in Avenue Q, to find music, uh, or rather the lyrics, uh, that are safe to play uh, in church. And I think that um, uh, JD has done a really, really great job in doing some of that editing work um, so that we're not all shocked and horrified and run out into the street saying, heretic, heretic uh, from, the, from the church. Um, today's uh, sermon title is called I'm Not Wearing Underwear Today. Um, and it does connect beautifully, I think, with the whole uh, series or rather the whole scripture that we had this morning that Dennis read for us uh, of, of Adam and Eve who were found naked in the garden. You know, we probably all know the story of Adam and Eve, and there are two creation stories, and this particular part of the creation story is after when Adam and Eve are now established in the garden, God has told them to be fruitful and to multiply and to have dominion over all of the land and of all over the seas and of everything that has been created in God's perfect order. And Adam and Eve have been strolling around in this garden completely um, aware of just the beauty of creation. And then suddenly something happens that disrupts that beauty, disrupts that creation. And uh, we can, depends on which translation you use or depending on your theolo theology or theological background, but uh, many of the scriptural references actually then go to talk about how the woman, uh, Eve, is tempted by the serpent and she takes some fruit from the tree of knowledge and she eats of it. And in that eating of it, uh, even though God has said you must not eat from that particular tree, the tree of knowledge, uh, suddenly they are aware of their circumstances. And uh, you know, men, and I, I'll just use that because I can, I'm a man, and so I can use me as an example, but men have then blamed women for centuries upon centuries upon centuries, not just for original sin, but for corrupting the whole of God's plan. Uh, and I don't believe that to be true. And so those, uh, I have all these women colleagues who are around me this morning who are, I, I can feel their eyes on the back of my neck already this morning. Um, I don't believe that. I don't believe in original sin. I think I've told you that before. I believe in original blessing. Um, I believe that, that God is a God of blessing uh, and that original sin was not about the disruption, but that original sin was really about uh, God's disappointment perhaps in all of humanity that we would suddenly see ourselves naked and feel guilt and shame around our nakedness, around our vulnerability. And that guilt and shame have been those energies, have been those forces that have thwarted us throughout our lives. How many of us have felt guilt and shame surrounding who we are in our lives? 
Good, this sermon is gonna connect with you hopefully this morning. I'm gonna ask you just to turn your focus to the screens for a moment because I want you to hear, I'm not wearing underwear today. I'm not wearing underwear today. No, I'm not wearing underwear today. Not that you probably care much about my underwear. Still, nonetheless, I gotta say, It's one of the quickest songs in Avenue Q, um, and perhaps one of the safest songs in Avenue Q. And uh, JD, thank you for not doing what you said you were gonna do, and that's put a picture of me as a baby not wearing underwear today um, as a part of that montage. I will repay you sometime, sometime in the future. I'm not wearing underwear today. The, the whole essence of who we are as individuals, especially in our modern culture, is a peoples who continue to wear underwear. And by that, I don't mean the undergarments that we wear this morning or not. Uh, I know that it was an option for us today. Um, but really, the, the whole essence of knowing that many of us walk around with so many masks, so many barriers, so many things that we put on as we face the world. Adam and Eve in this story from Genesis found themselves to be naked and in that nakedness they looked at themselves and instead of seeing the beauty of who they were, just in their vulnerability, just in their ability to be naked, it says that they had to go and find fig leaves and to sew them together into underwear so that they would hide from God. That they would put on the first layer that would protect them from the ways of the world. Somehow they had learned guilt and shame so early in their existence and so early in their lives. And many of us, as we face our lives and as we face our world, have found ourselves putting on layer upon layer upon layer that we continue to plaster ourselves so that the real essence of who we are is hardly seen to the world, hardly seen to the ways of the generation. And so many of us put on those layers. Sometimes it feels as if it's really hard to penetrate and to really see who the real us is. Even in our own vulnerability, it's hard for us even sometimes to recognize ourselves. I believe that's why therapy in our world is so valuable because it helps us to get beyond the layers of who we are to the real essence of the person that we have been created to be. And just like Adam and Eve, we learn that so early in our lives through messages that we continue to hear in the world even in churches, we don't often hear the message of God's love and of God's grace, but rather we hear God's message of one of wrath and vengeance and hatred. You know, I've often been criticized, even in this congregation, of not talking too much about sin. There are people who have wanted me to, to preach about hell and damnation and to preach about sin and to make us feel bad and feel guilty about the ways in which we live. And I've said to my critics over and over again, I don't need to preach that from the pulpit. It's preached enough in our newspapers. It's preached enough from our television. It's preached enough from our televangelists. It's preached enough in the world without me having to add an, another layer to the oppression that many of us have already faced in our lives. And as someone who doesn't believe in original sin, I believe that each and every one of us should find a way in which we are given a good self-esteem and a good sense of godliness in our lives because I truly believe that when we find abundant blessing, original blessing in our lives, when we have a good and healthy self-esteem, when we are able to not wear underwear today, that it's from that place that we begin to make good and healthy and whole and loving decisions for our lives. I believe that when we find God's grace that is enough for us, not just saying it's enough for other people, but it's enough for us, that when we find God's grace in our lives, that we are elevated to a new place, that it's difficult then to make decisions that would continue to harm us, 
but rather we begin to make decisions that would bless us and afford us a good life. That's what I believe God intended for Adam and Eve right at the beginning of creation. I believe that God wanted Adam and Eve to see themselves as naked and to find the beauty in that nakedness. Not to have to continue or to start putting on layers that would cover up the beauty of who we are. And yet, even today, we continue to layer ourselves and to layer our lives with so many masks, so many feelings, so many things, trying to people please over and over and over again, trying to live our lives through the views of other people rather than the views of who we are as created beings of God. We do it all the time and with good reason because it's hard to live in a world as completely naked as we might want to be. Those of you who read our church newsletter this week would have read about two meetings or two opportunities that I had this, this week to address two very different groups. Uh, the first group was a group of high school students at LA High School. Now, I don't often get to go into schools, but when I get that opportunity, I usually run for it because I know that our young people are the, the, the hope of the next generation. And uh, this was a GSA, it was a Gay Straight Alliance uh, group of these kids at LA High School. And these group of kids, there were about seven or eight of them when this teacher took over, and now there were 25 of them that had come together to form their GSA in this school. And she invited me in because she said that no matter how much she tried, there were two topics that she couldn't talk about without the kids reacting and responding, and not in good ways. She said, I can't talk about God, and I can't talk about parents. And she said, I need someone to come in. And I said, I know exactly what you mean. There are times even in this congregation that I might be saying things over and over again, but you bring somebody else in and they preach exactly the same as you preached. And people say to me, well, why haven't you said that to us before? Amen? I've heard that in this congregation. And so she asked me to come in and so I met with these kids. They were hungry for this message. And so I sat with them, these 25 kids, they actually didn't know I was coming, this was the surprise. They had told them just to show up to this meeting and for some reason they thought perhaps their teacher was bringing pizza for the class. And instead they, they got me. And so I got there and there was these 25 kids and you could see that they were thinking, well why is this man in a clerical collar at our GSA meeting? And so I sat there and of course I have a distinct advantage even at the very beginning because I put on my very, very best British accent that I possibly could. There was no confusion about where I came from when I sat in that room. And so I apologized first for my accent and hoped that it wouldn't uh, impede the discussion and these two wonderful girls onto my left said, oh no, it's beautiful. <laughs> and I knew, I knew I was onto a winner. And so I began by telling my story. And I took about 10 minutes just to talk about this congregation, about what we're doing as a spiritual community, about where I have come from. I believe our stories and our nakedness, our vulnerability is the most beautiful thing that we have to offer. And so I told my story and then the teacher allowed the students to tell theirs or to ask their questions. And in those first few moments, they were extremely polite. They just asked those nice little questions. You know, how do you know God loves us? You know, those nice, polite questions. And then as they began to trust me, they began to uncover the stories of their own childhood. Two of the kids had been raped. Four of the kids had tried to commit suicide. Other kids had been thrown out from their homes. There was a transgender man sat in the room and he looked over at me and he said, do you believe God makes mistakes? And I said, I don't believe God makes any mistakes. I believe God creates us just the way that we are and that God loves us just the way that we are. And he said, well, my parents can no longer call me he or she. 
My parents call me that thing over there. My parents are Christians. And they have told me that God has made a big mistake by putting me here on this earth. Friends, I want to tell you, it was heart-wrenching to hear these kids tell their story and predominantly their story had come from a place of the Christian faith that had told them that the God that we believe in does not exist and that the God of their understanding is one that does not love and does not like all of God's creation. These kids had learned already at 14 to 17 to put on layers and to place underwear on their lives just to protect themselves in the world. The second group I got to meet with was a group of social workers. They were just about a week away from graduating and becoming social workers in the world. And they had asked me to come and talk about God and spirituality and to help them to navigate this, this whole um, balance act, if you will, for them as they go out into the world to work with, with families. And so I met with this group, about 14 of them, uh, down at Los Angeles uh, City College. Great school, just a little bit south of downtown. I gathered with these folks and we had just over 90 minutes together we had the wonderful time of sharing about faith and many of them in this particular group were going to be working with uh, lesbian and gay youth and talking about how they can bring up faith and how they can allow people to talk about spirituality as a part of their holistic approach to social work. And what do they do when they are told by their young adults that God doesn't love them? And so I sat with them and I shared my story and I allowed them to have their conversation. They were perhaps a little bit more adult in their approach, but the same themes continued to erupt about how theology, how the church, how those of us who are people of faith have often put out a message into the world that is not one of love and authenticity. The kids and the adults in their emails to me this week have said that what they liked most about this journey was that they saw a vulnerability and an authenticity in the story of my life that I was not holding anything back. And friends, I, I'm not saying that, that I'm perfect. I'm far from perfect. But there is something about allowing the barriers and allowing the layers that we have all placed upon our lives, myself included, as we begin to allow them just to disappear. And allowing ourselves to be completely exposed to the world with our stories, with our lives. You know, one of the most beautiful things that I see in our congregation so often is the ability for folks in our congregation to cry. Sometimes out of joy, Sometimes out of, I can't believe he just said that. And sometimes out of a complete awareness that God's Spirit has found a way through the layers that moment, in that particular moment, so that I don't need to wear underwear today, so that I can cry so that I can let go of some of my fears, so that I can let go of some of the preconceived ideas of the God of, of my childhood and the God of my understanding or the God that I've been taught or the crap theology that continues to exist in our world. To allow, to allow, to allow some of those things to disappear in the safety of this congregation, in the beauty of this place. It is a moment of transformation for each and every one of us when we begin to believe in the God that loves us. Friends, we don't need to wear underwear in this church this morning. We don't need to wear the layers that we have placed upon us and that the world has placed upon us. We can allow it to let go this morning. When God entered that garden, Thousands of years ago with Adam and Eve, his disappointment was that they saw themselves naked and they had somehow learned that they needed to cover themselves up. And God wants, I believe, the world wants. 
authentic peoples that people can touch, that people can see, and that people can relate to. Last week at the 11 o'clock service, I shared about my dad about his cancer and about his life that is coming to an end very swiftly. And as I preached, and I didn't intend to preach or to talk about my dad at the 11 o'clock service, but as I began talking about him, I began to cry. I began to cry. Those of you who know me, that's not something I do very often. I'm a good Brit, stiff upper lip, with a cup of tea that solves every problem in the world. But I began to cry. And I had emails from members of the congregation this week who told me that they really appreciated my vulnerability and my ability to tell my story and my struggle with faith in the midst of death. Friends, I encourage us in this congregation to allow ourselves, our authentic selves, to continue to emerge, to continue to be present, because it's in that authenticity that God sees us and loves us. And the world will see and relate to us as people who struggle, but who also have faith. I'm not wearing underwear today, or am I? Let us pray. (laughs) Holy and blessed one, we hear the song, and we wonder where that connection is, but we hear the song afresh and anew this morning, and we understand that many of us have placed not just underwear on our lives, but layers upon layers upon layers that we then have to break through to find the authentic self. I pray, almighty and loving God, that in this season of pride, as we step out into the world and demonstrate our own lives as lives in relationship with you, that we might not do that in a glib way or in a way that looks fake, but in a way that is authentic and real and vulnerable, that demonstrates for every human being that this way of faith is not a way of rules and regulations, but this way of faith is living an authentic life with the struggles, the hopes, the joys, and those things that can often disappoint us. That we struggle through the values that we see in Jesus and pray that in this space, even if it's just for an hour on a Sunday morning, that we can bring our authentic selves to this place so that we can experiment what that feels like and then extend it into our lives. I pray, God, that if there are those amongst us this morning who are in need of a breakthrough, that we might call upon your Spirit and allow that Spirit to bring us wholeness. And in that wholeness, then enable us to go back out into the world to create a world that is living in its own authenticity. And now, God, I pray that you would take the words that have come from my mouth, not allow them to return to you without blessing us, and affording us that blessing. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning, friends and members of Metropolitan Community Church, Founders Metropolitan Community Church. Been thinking a lot about that name this week, and what that means to me is we're a congregational church, and in that name, it kind of says it all. We, we take care of our own. Um, had a really uh, cool experience this week, and that was a member of my family um, needed some pastoral support, and right away, bam, 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 four, four of our people, our um, clergy, were right there, right there. And um, you guys do that. You guys support this church, and, and me too. And, <laughs> and um, that's what it means to me. So give as you can, and it does come back. Thank you. God, thank you for these gifts. Thank you for those that could give. Thank you for those that could not give of their talents. Um, and bless us all. Amen. take our fears, doubts, broken dreams, and set them to death's mournful dirge, you take them, rearranging the notes and rewriting the lyrics for drums, electric guitar, tambourines, and keyboard, singing a new song of joy to us. Composer of creation, we give you the glory. When the world considers us second rate, putting us out on the buy one, get one clearance table on the sidewalk, you come under the awning, telling the proprietor to put us on your card, which you will pay in full before the next billing cycle begins. Liberator of our lives, we give you the glory. When day after day, we cannot seem to break the cycles of legalism, cynicism, apathy, you come proclaiming the good news, speaking the word which heals us, Speaking of peace, we give you the glory. God and community, holy and one, to you be the glory forever and ever, as we pray.
limping along, convinced we can make it on our own, that we are too busy for God. But when we look at our mistakes, the words we wish we could take back, the hurts we long to heal, we know we must confess. So God, so that you can forgive us and wrap us in your arms of steadfast love. Let us keep a moment of silence as we reflect upon our lives then before our God who loves us most. May we join together in our community confession. We do not presume to come to you expecting easy grace, for we are aware of what it costs you to forgive us, tender God. But speak the word, and we will know your mercy. Speak the word, and we will be made whole. Speak the word, Jesus Christ and we will find that faith to trust you in every moment. God comes not to punish, not to condemn, but to judge with that righteousness which brings redemption, which brings wholeness, with that truth that sets us free. So let it be known this day, God indeed is God who brings forgiveness and hope to all of us, to all people. Amen. Amen. God's creation is with you. And also with you. Here at this table, we draw closer to God. We come to offer our hearts to God. Join the chorus of the universes in praising God. Our voices unite with all of God's people in songs of joy. All creation is grounded in you, sovereign God, who spoke the word, and let it be known that you are coming to seas, so seas might roar your majesty, so fields might exalt your glory, so trees might sing your song. You formed us in your divine image, letting it be known that we were yours, the people of your heart and hopes. But sin and death called our names, and we chose to follow those petty gods limping along, letting our dance partners lead us as seduction's sirens sang their song. You sent the prophets to intercede, hoping that we would listen, but you decided to come closer still, sending Jesus to bring us your healing. With those who gave you glory in every time and place, with those from all over this wide earth, we sing that new song which has echoed down the generations. in his coming to us, as we remember we would have no hope without him, we declare that mystery that we know as faith. For on that night when Jesus was to be taken from us, when he gathered with his friends and his followers, even those who would betray him, he took bread from the table. He raised it. He blessed it. He broke it. Shared it with all who were gathered here. Take and eat of this, for this is my body that shall be broken for you. All that I ask is that you eat, you eat fully, not just that day, but for the ages to come. And when you do so, remember me. Likewise, he took a cup from the table, and again, he also asked blessings upon it. 
and he passed it to those who were there as it is passed to you and to me this day. Here, take and drink fully from this cup. Into this cup is poured forth my blood, the blood of the new covenant of everlasting life. Drink freely, know that your sins are forgiven. Drink freely and know that you are a forgiven people. Would you please pray with us? We sing glad songs to you, God of honor, God of majesty. For here at the table, you pour out your spirit on the gifts of your creation, set apart for sacred use. The grain of exultant fields is shaped into the bread of life, which strengthens us to go forth to intercede for those who are not highly valued by our world, yet who need healing and hope. The fruit of creation's vines becomes the sweet nectar of grace, which fills our emptiness until it overflows into justice for the oppressed, release for all held captive, recovery for the addicted, good news for the brokenhearted. And when all our times have come to an end, when the new seas roar with wonder, when newly planted meadows exult with laughter, when the trees of life sing for joy, we lift our voices with our sisters and brothers, singing the new songs of eternal life with you, God and community, holy and one. Amen. Amen. My friends, this table, as we know, is, is set by God and open to all. Here at Founders MCC, as with, founder, with MCCs all around this world, we share and celebrate an open communion. All are welcome to partake. In a moment, the ushers will guide you forward to stations here in front of the, of the sanctuary. And it is our tradition here to take the elements, dip it in non-alcoholic grape juice, place it upon your tongue, or you may take and dip and receive yourself. And then we share a brief blessing with you. If you'd like one or the other, let us know so we might serve you best. And if you'd like to come forward right now and just partake of the elements, but just between you and God, there'll be a station of consecrated elements to your right to which you might go at any time. But we ask, whether you come forward or not, come freely, come wanting, come as if this is the first time. Come by yourself, with your family, your friends, significant others, significant others. But let's keep this feast. And for those of you who are in our extended community worshiping, whether it's in Ventura, Australia, Amsterdam, this is the time for you to share a meal intentionally with the God of your understanding and those you love. So let's keep this feast. May the ushers guide us and the servers and acolytes please join us.
Okay. So our message this morning is one that reminds us to bring our authentic selves out mm -hmm. and to allow that healing work to begin that might break through some of the layers that you and I have created to hide even sometimes our own selves from the God who creates us. And so it is. Amen. Let's rise in body and spirit as we close worship in song this morning. God's gracious mercy and protection each and every one of us is given and the God of our understanding known to us as creator, savior, and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. Go in peace. today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship. Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. All of the people you've just seen in this broadcast, not just the ministers and the choir, but every person sitting on those pews, we are here for you. So please, why don't you connect with us? Interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You 